Welcome to Wilcom Embroidery Fonts Learning Center, where you will learn creative ways to use your ESA fonts and ESA glyphs. In today's project, I'll show you how to create this wild font design using the Celtic Hand FlexiFill font and the Celtic Elements glyphs. Let's open Hatch and see how it's made. We will begin this design by opening up the lettering tab and scrolling down to the Celtic Elements glyphs select insert character and scroll down to the letter I which is the pattern we'll be using today. We're going to increase the size to 125 millimeters. So type that right in there. Next we will open up the Celtic Hand FlexiFill font set at 75 millimeters and we will type in the letter E. Let's just change the color so we can see it when it pops up on our screen. And we will center align these. So we select both of these and come over to this align tab. Use the drop down arrow and select align centers. Now these designs are perfectly aligned. Let's also center them on our screen and inside the hoop. So place a zero in the X and Y position. We will duplicate this E three more times by selecting duplicate, duplicate, and duplicate. We will also change the color of each of these letters so we can keep track of them. With the bottom three E's selected, we will right click and click on Hide Selected. This will allow us just to work on these two objects. We will move this E to the very top of the sequence bar. We will also break it apart. Now select this Celtic glyph, go to Edit Objects, and Remove Overlaps. Just takes a moment, and you will see that the E has been broken into tiny little parts and the overlap has been removed. We no longer need this, so we can delete it. Next, we will unhide these remaining three ESA letters. So unhide all. We are going to change this red E and move this to the very top. The bottom two, I'm going to break apart. So select it, break apart, and we are also going to change this into an outline. Do the same with the yellow one as well. Break apart, select, outline. Now our letter is really starting to take shape. So going back up to the top on the red E, we will break this one apart. And we will change this from its original satin stitch to a tatami. But first you need to select it in order to change it to a tatami. I'm going to have it travel on edge and I'm going to remove the tatami underlay. We're just going to keep the edge run today. We're going to zoom in a bit on this and you can see that these satin stitches on these objects are quite long. If we turn on the grid, you can see they're over 10 millimeters in some spots. By changing the stitch angle, we can shorten the length of those satin stitches. So select it and tap H on the keyboard, which is your reshape button. So you're going to grab the little orange handle, and now I've shortened the satin stitch length. We'll just go through and look at the different designs. Here's another one right here. So we will click and drag that. These look fine. There's also a couple of small little uh, objects on here that aren't necessary so I'm going to zoom in and select it and I'm going to just delete it. These could be lengthened a bit so select the B again, zoom in, tap H on the keyboard, you can increase the size of the shape so it stitches out better. I'm going to turn off True View for a minute and you can see all of these individual shapes have a jump and a trim in between each one of those, which would make for a horrible stitch out. Well, I have a little remedy to correct that so it will stitch out without any stops. What we will do is we're going to take the orange E, we'll move it up once in the sequence, 
and we will change that to also to a green. Select them all and go over to Edit Objects and Branching. And it will ask you for an entry and exit point. I'm just going to put it here today. When I did this, look what happened. It eliminated all those jumps and trims between each one of these little individual objects. We'll turn the true view back on. Finally, we'll select our last D, go to Create Layouts, and select Offsets and Outlines. We'll have the offset set at 1.25 millimeters. We'll have one offset, and we'll see what the stem stitch looks like. Just click OK. You can easily change from a stem stitch to a motif. By selecting Motif, we'll use the arrow 7, and we will change the width to 2 millimeters, the height to 1.5 and the spacing to 1.5 and change this to blue. One last step is change this single run from yellow to green. Now simply save your design as an EMB file and export it to your favorite machine format. Thanks for watching and have fun creating new patterns for your FlexiFill fonts. Expand your embroidery creativity today by checking out all the amazing ESA fonts, ESA glyphs, flexifills, and quilters collection on WilcomEmbroideryFonts.com. Thanks for watching. If you want to make your embroidery life easier, be sure to hit the subscribe button below to be notified of new tips and tricks videos, giveaways, and more. Plus, if you want to try Hatch Embroidery software free for 30 days, or you already own Hatch and you'd like to download a free ESA font for it, click one of the links in the description below to learn more now. The next step of your embroidery legacy starts here with ours.